Hello, in this video we'll talk about Alzheimer's disease, which is a progressive neurodegenerative disease and it was discovered by Alois Alzheimer, who was a German neuroscientist. Alzheimer's is associated with dementia-like symptoms. So, what is dementia? Dementia is an umbrella term for severe loss of memory and other critical thinking ability which can cause interference with our daily life. Dementia should not be confused with Alzheimer's because dementia-like symptoms exist for several neurodegenerative disease including Alzheimer's. Now, Alzheimer's is most common in people who are at their late 60s. Let's understand the symptoms and signs of Alzheimer's in a layman's term. Alzheimer's starts with mild loss of memory and other cognitive cognitive uh, disabilities. So, a person might forget where he had kept his car keys, etc. But eventually, things get more worsened as the disease progress. He might forget the way of his home. And with further progression of this disease, there could be other problems, such as decline in non-memory aspects of cognition, impaired reasoning or judgment, difficulty in initiating or continuing a conversation, and a lot of difficulty in facial recognition. All of these things can make his or her life really difficult. So, these, this particular disease is progressing over time and worsening over time. That is why it's a progressive neurodegenerative disease. Now, initially, the damages appears to take place in hippocampus and entorenal cortex, which are actually important for learning and memory. So, this is the starting point. Eventually, the problem spreads all around the brain and with the progress of age, it can really damage the brain and allow the brain to shrink. From the autopsy report of Alzheimer's patient, it has been seen with where the cases of Alzheimer's is severe, the brain has shrunken even 50%. By looking at the cross-section of these brain and histopathological imaging showed us there is changes in sulci and gyri and also the ventricular architecture has changed in these brains. So, Alzheimer's disease can be caused due to many reasons. Like any other disease, there could be two components to it. First, there could be genetic reason behind it, there could be other environmental reason behind it, or it could be sporadic. So, let's try to understand that how Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed. In order to diagnose Alzheimer's disease, doctors might ask about a family history, whether somebody in the family has this kind of dementia-like symptoms or not. He can conduct specific tests for memory, problem solving or thinking ability. Later on, he can carry out standard medical tests including blood and other CSF-based tests to uh, explore the possibilities. Eventually, in case of uh, severe symptoms, doctors might conduct CT scan, MRI or PET scan to rule out several other possibilities involving brain injury and any other things. So, there are clinical hallmarks which are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Let's look at these clinical hallmarks and pathological aspects of Alzheimer's disease, which was described by Alois Alzheimer's in 1906. So, these clinical hallmarks involves beta amyloid plaque and neurofibrillary tangles. Let's try to understand what are they. So, this is a healthy brain which has neuronal network, glia and many other cell types. In this brain, in each neuron, there would be amyloid precursor protein. This protein is important for neuronal physiology and functioning of the neuron. It helps in synaptogenesis and helps in synaptic plasticity. So, this particular protein is important for neuronal function. Now, like any other protein, this protein would be degraded and recycled. There are mechanisms which allows this protein to be degraded and recycled. And several enzymes take part in this, play, uh, in this particular aspect is alpha-secretase and gamma-secretase. 
this cleavage leads to recycling of this protein. But sometimes there could be a faulty cleavage with a different set of enzymes, which leads to a fragment which is more sticky, which can stick with each other and form aggregates. These aggregates are deposited outside the neuron and this forms the amyloid plaque. Apart from amyloid plaque, the second aspect is neurofibrillary tangles. In order to understand neurofibrillary tongue tangles, we have to understand how microtubules are important for neuron. Microtubules are like highways, on top of which cargoes can be transported with the help of several molecular motors. Now these highways or microtubules are stabilized by several proteins such as tau or MAP etc. This allows proper neuronal transport and physiology. Due to some aberrant reason there could be phosphorylation in these tau proteins which don't allow tau protein to interact with the microtubule. Instead, they clump with each other and forming something called neurofibrillary tangles. So neurofibrillary tangles are found inside the neuron whereas plaques are formed outside. So these are two clinical hallmarks which allows uh, us to detect or understand about Alzheimer's disease. But apart from these clinical hallmarks, recent research has shown apart from neuron, the glial population in the brain is also affected in Alzheimer's disease. So we have astrocytes, microglia, oligodendrocytes as glial population in our brain. Microglia can recognize these extracellular plaques and can get activated and thereby secreting several cytokines and these cytokines have aberrant effect. They can excite these astrocytes to become reactive astrocytes and these reactive astrocytes can interact with the neuron in a toxic fashion. Overall, these interaction between different cell types might lead to brain inflammation. And this is the current understanding about several cell types, how they interact in Alzheimer's brain. In a working model, these plaques are detected by microglia, microglia interacts with astrocytes with several cytokines and astrocyte reacts back with the neuron, leading to a vicious cycle of neuroinflammation in Alzheimer's patient's brain. And that is why Alzheimer's is very hard to create a cure because there are so many cell types interacting with each other which brings out the disease pathology. Now, it is important to understand inside our brain there could be different cell types and each of these cell types would have different cell states. For example, in this case we see the reactive astrocytes which are induced by the microglia and play critical role in progression of these disease. But scientists has a lot of confusion about how these cell types and their cell state help in disease progression. Now, what we know about Alzheimer's disease come from genome-wide association studies, cell culture-based model or transgenic mouse model. So all these mouse model or transgenic models help us to uh, devise therapeutic development and ultimately these therapeutic agents can undergo clinical trial which would give us a medication. But the problem is in the market there is no successful drug for Alzheimer's. Why is so? All these drug trials that happened which tried to clear the plaque has failed miserably. So what, what is the lacunae in this approach? Let's try to understand this quickly. Now the current treatment option that is existing in the market is several neurotransmitter reuptake blockers. So in our brain there are synapses and in the synapses there are several neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, glutamate, glutamate etc. Now these neurotransmitters are reuptake after release. But these drug targets allows the blockage of these reuptake mechanism which helps in the cognitive ability and increase the excitability in Alzheimer's patient. But this cure is partial. It gives a little bit of cognitive improvement but does not cure the cause of the disease and still there is no medication for Alzheimer's. Now the reason behind not having a treatment or not having proper treatment against Alzheimer's is hidden in the time of the disease progression. When we think about 
onset of dementia like symptoms it's already too late so we really don't know what happens in the early stage of disease progression let's say a person having dementia like symptoms in late 60s we don't know what happened to his brain in his 40s is there a way to look at his brain when he was in 40s researchers try to look for early biomarkers which would allow the researchers to find the disease or try to diagnose the disease in an early stage indeed there are some biomarkers which are csf based and testing the csf can give us a result regarding that for example phosphorylated tau or beta amyloid can be also found in csf of alzheimer's patient which works like a biomarker to uh, to diagnose the disease early but further research is important to get even earlier biomarkers of alzheimer's disease now when we talk about mouse model though mouse is similar with human there are certain problems because the risk genes which are associated with alzheimer's are not really similar between mouse and human for example trem2 or apoe these two genes are 50% identical in terms of their amino acid sequence identity so there are a lot of differences between mouse and human models and a lot of preclinical trials has been done on these mouse models in short we need a model which is more human like with the development of stem cell technology researchers has developed organoids which are like mini brains now researchers can take induced uh, take skin cells from patients and make induced pluripotent stem cell from that or from human embryonic stem line stem cell line organoids can be developed these organoids also show plaque formation so now it is possible to look at a person from its early stages of disease progression his cells can be taken from his body it can be induced to become a pluripotent stem cell later on the brain organoids can be developed from his cells and it can be assessed for risk of plaque formation or risk, risk of alzheimers like symptoms now it would help to detect the disease fairly early so it can give a better treatment so so this organoid based technology holds a huge potential in future clinical research in short ad patient skin cell can be converted to ipsc and from these ipsc derived organoids scientists are now trying to understand the alzheimer's progression with multi omics approach including single cell transcriptomics proteomics and electrophysiological studies this would if uh, this would kind of bring out several mechanisms which are involved in this disease progression in near future so in summary we learn what is alzheimer's disease what are the signs and symptoms how this disease is diagnosed what are the cellular and molecular complication in alzheimer's brain and what are the available treatment options and what are the latest research in alzheimer's field so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can also support my channel in patreon my lectures are also present in anacademy which is india's biggest learning platform you can use my code ap10 to get a 10% discount if you want to support my channel you can support me in patreon or you can use bim upi to pay me a small amount even your small contribution means a lot to me please let me know in the comment how you like my video thank you